Hi, I'm Frank Drummond from the University of Maine, and I'm making this short video to teach you how to evaluate pollination in your fields. And there are two parts to this video. The first is to estimate fruit set based on counting the number of flowers, and then after bloom is finished, counting the numbers of fruits that are a result of good pollination of the flowers in your field. The second part is to evaluate the actual pollination force or the density of bees that you have visiting the flowers in your field so that you can make decisions on whether you have adequate numbers of honeybees or native bees or both visiting the flowers in your field. So let's first start with estimating fruit set in the field. So we are in Washington County at peak pollination and Blueberry stems have, on an average, about 75 flowers per stem, which means that there can be up to about 8,000 flowers per square yard, so a tremendous number of flowers. And we want to essentially record how many flowers there are per stem in our fields and how many end up being fruit. And so what we recommend is that you locate 10 clones and select three stems in each of the ten clones equaling 30 stems that you mark and count or you locate six clones and mark five stems in each clone again yielding about 30 stems as a minimum that you mark and count throughout your field. You don't really need that many materials you need a flag or a stake to mark the clone and so you'll need ten of these at least and then you'll need some bright colored string or threads and maybe some labels that attach to the end of the threads. And you'll need a data pad such as this and then a pencil to record the data. And so you arbitrarily select, in this case, three stems close to the flag. And so here's a stem that we've collected. And with the stems, you can bend them, twist them, and turn them and you can start at the bottom flower clusters and work your way up. So as we count this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. And for large numbers of flowers, Maybe for 50 or more, we suggest that you count the stems twice, and if you get the same amount of flowers, then you're done. If you get different numbers, then you count it for a third time and take an average. Once you're finished counting, you tie a brightly colored thread around the stem with a loose square knot so you don't scrape the bark and damage the stem and then you label it, as it says here, clone two, stem number three. But before you leave your clone, you'll want to record the number of flowers in your data sheet, such as this, and then move on to the next clone and record all that data so that you have the numbers of flowers, and then later on, you can mark down the numbers of fruit. Now we'll come back after petal fall the third week of June or the first week in July and we'll count the number of berries that have formed from these flowers and calculate the percentage of fruit set or the percentage of fruits from those flowers on each stem. So let's do a little time traveling and we'll visit the uh, next plot. So here we are about four weeks later, and we found our mark stem in this clone. And so now what we need to do is actually count the number of flowers that have turned into fruit. And so we'll go back again, starting from the lower cluster, and work our way up. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And so we have 14, and if you remember before, we had 27 flowers. So it's roughly about 50% of the flowers 
will end up being fruits. And so we'll continue to do that for all of our 30 stems and they will, we will then average that and we'll get an average percent fruit set. And this is the initial fruit set. Now blueberries often drop many of the fruit that they initially set and this can be because of environmental conditions such as drought but it also can be just from the fact that blueberries produce so many flowers and they can't hold on all that fruit. And so it can be good to leave this thread on and come back in early July and get a final count and that will give you the percent of flowers that actually end up as harvestable yield. And so with that, what we'll do is we'll zoom in very closely and we'll let you see the swollen calyxes, which will then be the fruit from the flowers. So what we're looking at now is some of the swollen calyxes of these flowers that are destined to become fruit. So right now they're nice green swollen fruits and many of these will hold on but some of them might be dropping off later as the season progresses. So let me just move you over to take another look at some other ones. Here's some other ones and you can see there are some on there which aren't swollen. Generally many growers refer to these as pinheads and these will most likely drop off either because they were never visited by a bee or there just weren't enough pollen grains, about a minimum of six that need to be placed during visitation. What I'd like to do now is we can switch and look at some photographs to make sure that you can identify honeybees and tell them apart from a lot of the other native bees like bumblebees, sand bees, and sweat bees. Hi, I'm back again and what we're going to be doing now is learning how to evaluate the foraging force of bees that you have in your field and then relate that to the expected fruit set that you might get. What we found from previous research is that if you count the number of bees per square yard for a minute and sample your field at least 10 of these one square yard quadrats that you should get a fairly reliable estimate of your pollinator force. Now what you need to do is you need to count both the numbers of honeybees and native bees because their efficiency in pollination is quite different. Now what you want to do is you want to walk very slowly up to the plot and not cast a shadow and once you reach the plot you can kneel down like I'm doing and wait for about 15 seconds for the bees to settle down and then with your watch time a one minute duration and count the numbers of honeybees and native bees that are in the plot. Right now I can see there are two that we've started out with that were already in the plot. And there's a third that has just arrived. And if they leave, that's okay. And there's a fourth honeybee that's just come into the plot and a bumblebee that's working the flowers. And so at the end of a minute, you accumulate all of the bee visits within the plot that actually land in the plot and for this plot, we had four honeybees and one bumblebee. And then you visit the nine other plots, or however many you put out, and you average the numbers of honeybees and the numbers of bumblebees per minute per your 10 plots. And the reason we do this is to get an estimate of the amount of fruit set. So what we have here is a calculator that we've developed after about a decade of research and, and it shows the relationship between the numbers of bees per square yard per minute and the fruit set. And so on the horizontal axis, it shows the numbers of bees per minute as they go from zero to high numbers. And on the vertical axis, it shows fruit set from zero to 100%. And what this graph shows is that as both honeybees and native bees increase in their density, then fruit set increases. 
but this also shows that native bees are about two and a half times more efficient on a per bee basis than honeybees. And so there's a mathematical formula that translates this graph into an estimate of fruit set based on these observations. And what it is, is that the fruit set is equal to 14, which is a number that represents the fruit set that you'll get at very, very low levels of bees where you can't even count them in the plots, plus the numbers of honeybees times eight, plus the numbers of native bees times 18. And so in the count that we just did, if that was representative of your whole field averaged over the 10 quadrats, we had four honeybees. So four times eight is 32. We had one bumblebee, a native bee, and so 18 times 1 is 18, and 18 plus 32 is 50. 50 plus 14 is 64. And so with those levels throughout your field, you would estimate that you'd have about 64% fruit set. Now what you can do is you can tie this into the flower counts that we showed you how to do earlier to see if, in fact, you get similar amounts of expected fruit set compared to what you measured with flowers being turned into fruit at the end of the pollination season. Well, I hope that was clear and will be helpful for you to begin to estimate pollination for the next several years across many of your fields so you can get an idea of whether you're getting adequate pollination in your blueberry fields.